And a big problem is AI powered social engineering. So having attackers use new tools like large language models where they can pull down tons of OSINT on a target, whether that be a person or an organization or both, and then utilizing things like deep fake voice for real-time phone calls, even real-time video, SMS, generative AI email, in order to run you know, a sophisticated series of coordinated attacks using AI agents so they can do it at, at really any scale in order to you know, cause havoc at a company. And, and havoc could be financial distress, it could be ransomware, it could be bringing down the, the operations of the organization. It could be any, any number of things for, for some sort of malicious pursuit. I think, you know, th 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 there's some truth there. And I think there's also similar truth to attackers being able to do that as well, where, you know, if a really smart, proficient attacker can create a whole bunch of agents to do things on their behalf and, you know, to be, you know, stealing funds and pulling things together and running it, then they're going to be able to make these uh, really powerful institutions for, uh, for attack that, uh, you know, I think a lot of modern business is not ready for. I was at a company and we fell prey to one of these deep fake attacks that almost cost the companies tens of millions of dollars. And we thought about it and there was no real way to detect it other than putting up different barriers. But theoretically, eventually the attacker could probably get through those barriers. Yeah, look, I, I think that we've already kind of gone beyond the era of just the deep fake into the era of like the deep fake persona. So people hear deep fake and they think, okay, voice and likeness got it, you know? Sure. I think what I see is different is the combination of voice and likeness plus open source intelligence. So, um, you know, what can I, I find out about you, about your family, about your company, about all the sort of stuff that I can, because there's, there's just a tremendous amount of it now available on LLMs that's more accessible than it's ever been before. And then I can also do real-time data processing to use this vast amount of data and turn it into a, you know, realistic back and forth conversation. You know, that to me is the difference is that the, the intelligence element, the persona element of the deepfake that, that goes beyond just the voice and likeness. Hey, look, I, I think that number one, is you need to uh, spread awareness through the organization on what's possible, right? You want to just filter out 95% of the nonsense because, uh, you know, the, the really, really good, really sophisticated ones, you know, maybe they're going to get through, but we want to catch the 95% the that aren't there, right? The 98%, whatever it might be. And that comes through awareness and then process and things like that. Number two is control. So helping a company understand where are their controls missing? How can they make their controls better? What is their, you know, their control checklist to look like. So hiring people who are impersonating someone else, often they're impersonating a LinkedIn profile or whatever. Like how easy is it for an attacker to make a Gmail account that looks like it's Joe's Gmail and, you know, come up with Joe's LinkedIn and say, I'm this guy and I want to apply for this job and here's my resume and it copies your, your LinkedIn. And you know, and get on a call and it's you and they're talking to you on Zoom and they say, yeah, you know what, we should hire this guy. And then they hire you and they give you access to all the systems and they, they give you all the code and they, they give you everything. And you say, great, thanks very much. And there's obviously a tremendous amount that someone can do then with all that information. I think that we provide some tools. We have a new dossier that we can offer for, for individuals where it kind of figures out everything that's out there about you, figures out how you might be able to get some of that stuff removed. There's a ton of public accounts. There's a ton of OSM we don't realize that that's out there. Like every review you've left, all the comments on websites, all this stuff that when kind of thrown into an LLM, the LLM does have that magic where it can take in all these different data points. And then it's like, yo, based on all this, how would Joe handle X? And it's like, pretty good response, right? So that I think is an element that people really need to do some some cleanup on is all the, the, the crap that we all have out there from, you know, the MySpace account. Well, maybe I'm dating myself, but whatever account you made years ago and need to, need to get that off there. You have like this LLM that you've trained on a whole lot of data from maybe, you know, other deep fakes. Maybe you've even done, you know, your own deep fakes and you trained it on that and whatnot. And then you're building the solution based off of all of that information and providing it? Yeah. So what, what we do is we'll pull a ton of OSINT on an individual in an organization. And from that, you know, you can see risks like the ability to get, you know, your, your voicemail from your phone, which is all I need to 
make a deep take of your voice. You're a public person, so we can make lots of deep takes of you. But, you know, the average person is not going to have that, right? And, you know, we can pair that with just your LinkedIn picture. You know, you get your picture on LinkedIn, boom, you know, you can have an interactive video chat with that person now, which is, you know, <laughs> unfortunate. And, uh, and it's very easy. And then you can pair that with all sorts of other data points to see where the biggest risks lie. Yeah, I mean, like, you make it sound pretty easy. Right. I think that the curveball that I'm afraid of is, you know, a lot of this technology, I think, was the domain of state actors a few years ago. And now it's kind of shifted over to professional but funded actors that are organized. And at the end of the day, they just want to make money that are mostly overseas. Right. But they're, they're, they're businesses. I think the thing I'm scared about is it migrating from the business era to the sort of anarchy slash, as I like to say, like, you know, a 13-year-old killing ants era, where it's like someone who doesn't have a clear financial goal, but instead may just enjoy causing havoc. I mean, look, there's over 2 million different models now available on Hugging Face. And, you know, a person can download those models, throw it these days on a high-end smartphone is probably good enough to run a lot of stuff, right? So I think you need a computer, which means, you know, it's truly a global available thing now uh, and do all sorts of stuff. So I, I think that, and, and obviously the models are getting so cheap too. It used to be a, a, an issue around the level of processing speed you had or access to be able to run the compute to do some of these things, which is why you saw it more in state organized crime, uh, state actors organized crime. But now we're, we're quickly crossing lots of 